sometimes for six months, perhaps even over a year. So not only is it reducing wait times, but it's transplanting patients that otherwise would not get an organ. Taylor's family will never forget what they've been through, or the people and the machine that saved her life. It'll always be there in the back of my mind, but, you know, <clears throat> you know, she's, she's got a lovely, healthy heart, and her future probably. Clive. Ollie, 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 Ollie. Clive Novak Djokovic described his 18th Grand Slam triumph as emotionally challenging, but it didn't show on court at all. The world number one meeting Daniel Medvedev in straight sets to win the Australian Open yet again. Adam Wilde reports. There are few players in the history of tennis that have dominated one tournament quite like Novak Djokovic in Melbourne. Eight times a winner before today. There is a slight sense, though, that times in tennis may be changing. Daniel Medvedev at the forefront of the sport's next generation. But Djokovic, well, he's not the type to let up, nor the legs go. The mark of a great champion, always the hunger for more. Set one, hard four, super. But Djokovic, hard one. Medvedev giving everything, getting nothing. The feeling of so many players before him when faced with the brilliance of Djokovic. Things now beginning to fall apart for Medvedev. In racket here included. In truth, Djokovic remains just too good, at times unplayable, the complete player, roaring himself onward towards yet another title, winning in emphatic style. I'd like to thank the Rob Labour Arena. Um, I love you each year more and more. It's been a lot of fair things going. Thank you so much. The greatest the Australian Open has ever known, the next generation. Will just have to wait. Adam Wilde, BBC News. The Football. Scottish Premiership leaders have both been playing today. Highlights follow the news. Just stay right there if you want the results. Manchester City still 10 points clear after their 1 0 win away at Arsenal. Raheem Sterling scored the winner inside the first couple of minutes. That extended their winning run to 18 in all competitions. City's nearest rivals, Manchester United and Leicester, are level on points in second and third after both also won today. West Ham have broken into the top four after a 2 1 win over Tottenham. It's 35 years since the Hammers have been in that position at this stage of the season. Okay, the Scotland. are moving ever closer to the title in Scotland. They won 4 1 against Dundee United and that 18 points clear of Celtic, who lost 1 0 at Ross County. Now, the leaders, Bristol Bears, threw away a 25 point lead to draw against London Irish in the Rugby Union Premiership. Tom Parton went over for the Exiles in the last couple of minutes. And the conversion tied the scores at 34 all. Bristol are three points clear of champions Exeter in the table. Snooker. It's been a huge upset in the final of the Welsh Open snooker. Outsider Jordan Brown has beaten the six time world champion Ronnie O'Sullivan. Northern Irishman is ranked 81st in the world and had never played in a major final before. Though it went to a deciding frame, Brown showed great composure to see out the match, winning nine frames to eight. The 33 year old also takes home 70,000 pounds. Sir Ben Ainsley's America's Cup dream is over. Ineos Team UK was well beaten by Luna Rossa, the Italian boat, winning both races in Auckland today to take the Prada Cup 7 1. They'll now take on the holders Team New Zealand for the main prize, the America's Cup, next month. Ainsley says they'll go back to the drawing board. Now, much more on the BBC Sport website, of course. You can catch up on all the stories that we've been bringing you, giving a sporting perspective of LGBT plus history. Month. But that's all for now. Clive. Clive. Well, Holly, thank you for that. Holly Foster. And that's it. There's more throughout the evening on the BBC News channel, but now on BBC One. It's time for the news where you are. Good night, Clive. of Leeds tomorrow after two possible cases of the South African variants of COVID-19 were found in January. The testing means people living in parts of the LS8 postcode area will be asked to take a test whether they have symptoms or not. Kathy Booth reports. This is the Infinity Centre in Hare Hills and it's here where surge testing for the new South African variant of COVID is due to begin tomorrow. It comes after two cases dating back to January were found to possibly show signs of being the South African variant. So, if you live here in LS8, you're bound to have some questions. So, does the testing affect the entire LS8 area? No, it doesn't. It's just parts of Hare Hills and an area north of Easterly Road. And are the tests mandatory? No, they're not. You can choose whether or not you're tested. Well, for more information, I spoke to Councillor Salma Amin. 
indication that there is a, a live South African variant within the area. If people don't have any symptoms, should they still get a test? This test is specifically for individuals who do not have any COVID symptoms. If you do have COVID symptoms, then please follow the normal process you would do and isolate. What we're targeting is potentially asymptomatic individuals. The testing will take place from tomorrow. Happy Blue, BBC with more news. The next podcast story from Hapster has been illuminated once again in 25 years. The one that began it a long time ago and never looked ahead due to a lack of funding. The 12th century castle will now be lit every day from dusk until midnight. Next, a 21-year-old from Firth has become the youngest woman to row solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Jasmine Harrison took 70 days to complete the 3,000-mile journey. She battled 20-foot waves and even encountered sharks. She's been speaking to our reporter, Dave Edwards. After 70 days, 3 hours and 48 minutes, this was the moment when Jasmine Harrison became a record breaker. She only took up rowing two years ago. Now she's the youngest woman to row across the Atlantic Ocean. The best thing is seeing all the wildlife, the sunsets, just nature. That was just amazing. But there were some tricky moments too, from 20 foot waves to sharks to this. Nice stuff. 
going to be honest and straight up. 2020 was a mess.